Hello and welcome to my channel Crystal DNA. I hope all of you are doing good. I welcome you all to the first video of the series Structure and Function of Cell, where we will take up the topic the nucleus. So, without any further delay, first up, let's see what are the topics that we will be covering in this series. So, these are the uh, topics uh, mentioned here we will be covering in this series. And the first up, we will be uh, discussing the nucleus and we will be discussing protein sorting and transport of protein across the membrane of different organelles like mitochondria, chloroplast and peroxism. And also we will be uh, discussing the cytoskeleton and cell movement parts and uh, we will be discussing uh, plasma membrane, structure of plasma membrane and transport system of plasma membrane and also we will be uh, discussing uh, topics like cell wall, the extracellular membrane and cell interaction. So starting with the nucleus, uh, here is the diagram of the nucleus and when we talk about nucleus, uh, as you know, the nucleus is the uh, housing of our cells genetic information and because uh, genetic information uh, resides within the nucleus and also uh, we can say uh, nucleus is the cell central system because uh, different uh, important mechanisms like DNA replication, mass system, gene regulation, all these important mechanisms all are occurring within the nucleus and so here uh, in this topic we will be covering these important topics and first of we will be uh, discussing the nuclear envelope, uh, structure of nuclear envelope and different parts of nuclear envelope then we will be discussing uh, how molecules are uh, transported uh, through the nuclear envelope and also we will be discussing uh, chromatin, how chromatins are organized within the nucleus and also we will be discussing uh, different types of nuclear bodies and uh, here in this slide we will be discussing uh, the parts of nuclear envelope and uh, when we talk about the uh, nuclear envelope, uh, nuclear, as you know nuclear envelope is uh, consists of three parts, uh, first of uh, nuclear membrane and nuclear line and nuclear core complex and uh, as you know nuclear membrane consists of two membrane one is inner uh, nuclear membrane and uh, outer nuclear membrane and uh, here you can see uh, this is the uh, inner nuclear membrane and this is the outer nuclear membrane and the outer nuclear membrane you can see uh, is continuous with the uh, endoplasmic reticulum and uh, beneath the inner nuclear membrane uh, we have uh, here we have the nuclear lamina so these are the uh, nuclear lamina this is the nuclear lamina uh, support the uh, nucleus so these are the nuclear lamina and also uh, we have the uh, nuclear pore complex so these are the uh, nuclear pore complex so this nuclear pore complex uh, only channels provided by nuclear envelope uh, through which molecules are uh, transported across the uh, nuclear mountain and so in this slide we will be uh, covering the nuclear lamina in details and uh, as you know nuclear lamina basically composed of a fibrous protein named lamins so lamins is the uh, fibrous protein and the class of intermediate filaments and lamins associated with some uh, associated protein associated proteins and these uh, lamins and associated protein uh, for the nuclear lamina so here you can see uh, these are the nuclear lamina these are the nuclear lamina and you can see nuclear lamina uh, bind to specific inner nuclear membrane like NPR and NRN also nuclear lamina is connected with 
the link complex and you can see the link complex also connected with the uh, cytoskeletal uh, filament of uh, cytoplasm uh, which basically uh, span the inner and outer nuclear membrane. So this is uh, all about the nuclear lamina. In this slide we will be discussing the structure of nuclear pore complex. So when we talk about the structure of nuclear pore complex, uh, nuclear pore complex basically consists of a hollow structure of protein which surrounds a uh, central transporter. So consists of a hollow structure of proteins. Structure of proteins and this hollow structure uh, basically surrounds the uh, central transporter. Central central transporter. So when we talk about the hollow structure, the hollow structure basically consists of eight spoke protein. It has four proteins and three ring proteins. And uh, eight spoke protein and three ring proteins basically assembly to form a hollow structure. Here uh, you can see uh, this is the uh, this is the hollow structure uh, we talked about uh, here. Uh, we have uh, the spoke protein. Uh, so these are the uh, spoke protein, and there are eight spoke protein uh, around the hollow structure. And these uh, spoke proteins basically uh, attach with three ring proteins. So these are the uh, ring protein, and and this is the uh, cytoplasmic ring and uh, from which uh, cytoplasmic filaments are extended and uh, this is the uh, nucleoplasmic ring uh, from which nuclear filaments are uh, extends to form a uh, basket like structure. So this is the uh, hollow like structure uh, and it basically uh, uh, surround a uh, central transporter. So this is the central transporter and within the central transporter uh, we have uh, nucleoporin proteins and uh, within the central transporter we have Fg nucleoporin proteins and Fg uh, means uh, this nucleoporin protein basically reach in uh, phenyl alanine and glycine amino acid, uh, which uh, basically uh, these nucleoporin proteins basically regulates uh, the transport of molecule through the complex. So in this slide, we will be discussing uh, types of transport mechanism involving in uh, nuclear power complex. Uh, as you know, depending on their size and structure, a uh, molecule can travel through the Nickel, nuclear pore complex by two mechanisms. Uh, one is uh, through passive diffusion. Passive diffusion and another is uh, selective transport. Selective transport and uh, small molecules and some proteins with molecular mass uh, less than 40 kilodaltons uh, molecular mass less than uh, 40 kilodaltons uh, these uh, molecules basically uh, decrease freely uh, through the pore in either direction and most proteins and RNAs however pass through the nuclear pore complex by uh, selective transport process as as they need and they need to have a nuclear localization signal and nuclear export signal. So for selective transport of molecules, they need to have nuclear localization signal and nuclear 
एक्सपर्ट से ना सो वी विल बी डिस्कस दिस कॉन्सेप्ट इन डिटेल्स इन नेक्स्ट लाइव हियर वी हैव टू प्रोटीन हैविंग न्यूक्लियर लोकलाइजेशन सिग्नल and in this protein we have a single stage of uh, signal and in this protein we have a bipartite signal as it consists of two parts so this nuclear localization signal needed for uh, nuclear transport of protein so here in this slide we will be discussing how protein imports through the uh, nuclear pore complex so here we have a cargo protein uh, who is to be transported inside the nucleus and this cargo protein having a uh, nuclear localization signal which recognized by an protein and when a protein bind with the nuclear localization signal this complex now um, bind bind to the cytoplasmic uh, filaments of uh, nuclear pore complex and now protein pass the uh, cargo protein uh, through the nuclear pore complex into the nucleus and uh, inside the nucleus we have uh, Uh, ran gtp protein and uh, ran gtp when bind to the important uh, the cargo protein released and now uh, the complex of ran gtp and important uh, will be uh, transported to the uh, cytoplasm and here we have uh, ran gtp is activating protein which basically stimulate the uh, hydrolysis process hydrolysis of uh, Uh, hydrolysis process of uh, ran gtp to ran gdp so when hydrolysis process uh, happened uh, important protein uh, dissociate and ran gdp now uh, bind with ntf2 receptor and this complex now uh, back to the uh, nucleus and here nucleus we have uh, ran one in exchange factor which basically convert uh, ran gdp to uh, ran gdp recycle the ran gdp so this is how uh, cargo protein having nuclear localization signal uh, import through the nuclear pore complex so in this slide we will be discussing how proteins are exported to the cytoplasm uh, through the nuclear pore complex so here we have a uh, cargo protein Uh, having a uh, nuclear uh, export signal and this nuclear export signal uh, is recognized by an exporter and now exporter bind with the nuclear export signal to form a complex and this complex uh, having a cargo protein and the exporter and a ran uh, gtp so this uh, complex basically now uh, transported to the uh, cytoplasm through the nuclear pore complex and here we have ran uh, gtp activity protein uh, which basically uh, hydrolyzed uh, the ran gtp to ran gdp and after the hydrolysis uh, of ran gdp uh, cargo protein and dissociate and the exporting also dissociate now ran gdp uh, and uh, ntf2 uh, receptor form a complex and uh, ran exporting also combined with this complex and this complex now uh, pass through the nuclear pore complex into the uh, nucleus and inside the nucleus we have uh, ran one in action factor which basically uh, convert the ran gdp to ran gdp and dissociate the exporting uh, ntf2 receptor and recycle the ran gdp to ran gdp this so this is how uh, protein uh, basically exported to the cytoplasm th through the nuclear pore complex so in this slide we'll be discussing how mrna is exported to the cytoplasm so as you know mrna synthesis uh, process occurs in the nucleus so for protein synthesis mrna need to uh, transported to the uh, cytoplasm so for uh, export of uh, this mrna mrna uh, needed uh, some exporter complex and this exporter complex bind with the uh, mrna and this uh, 
and complex this expert or complex basically uh, pass the mrna through the nuclear core complex and here uh, at the uh, cytoplasmic side we have uh, helicase uh, enzyme which basically uh, dissociate uh, the exporter complex and release the mrna into the cytoplasm and this is how mrna exported to the cytoplasm here we will be discuss the regulation of import of uh, transcription factors so here we have nf kappa beta transcription factor which having uh, a nuclear localization signal which uh, uh, basically blocked by uh, an inhibitory protein uh, which is uh, inhibitory kappa beta protein uh, which basically block the nuclear localization signal so uh, when uh, nf kappa beta transcription factor gets uh, uh, appropriate signal to import inside the nucleus and so the phosphorylation and proteolysis of inhibitory kappa beta protein occurs which leads to dissociation of uh, inhibitory kappa beta protein and now important bind to the uh, nuclear localization signal and this complex now uh, pass through the nuclear pore uh, complex uh, into the nucleus so here another example of PSO4 transcription factor uh, which having a nuclear localization signal in uh, phosphorylation form and when uh, the dephosphorylation of uh, nuclear localization signal occur uh, important bind with uh, the uh, carbo transcription factor and this complex uh, pass through the uh, nuclear core complex inside the nucleus so this is how uh, transcription factors are uh, imported uh, into the nucleus so th so this is all about for this video and in the next video we will be discuss how chromatids are organized within the nucleus so thank you